comes out. Listen to this. Listen to the hatred that Richard Dawkins has for God. But I want you guys to also listen to something. Listen to how when, when he is pressed for cold, hard evidence, he admits that he's not sure. Is this what atheists want to rest their soul on? A madman by the name of Richard Dawkins that is not sure? Have you read his books? I have. Some of his books he says there's, it's impossible for God to exist. And then in other books it says God could exist. This is, this is the definition of the madness of atheism. Listen to this, guys. Listen to the hate of Richard Dawkins. How are you? Fine, thank you. You have, uh, you have written that uh, God is a psychotic delinquent invented by mad, deluded people. No, I didn't say quite that. I said something rather better than that. Oh, well, please tell us <laughs> what you said. Please tell us what you um, said. Uh, well, I would have to read it from, from, from the book. No, please. The God of the Old Testament is arguably the most unpleasant character in all fiction. Jealous and proud of it. A petty, unjust, unforgiving control freak. A vindictive, bloodthirsty ethnic cleanser. A misogynistic, homophobic, racist, infanticidal, genocidal, filicidal, pestilential, megalomaniacal, sadomasochistic, capriciously malevolent bully. So that's what you think of God? Yeah. How about, how about if people believe in a God of infinite lovingness and kindness and forgiveness and generosity, sort of like the modern-day God. Why spoil it for them? Oh, um... Why not just let them have their fun I, and enjoy I, it? I mean, I don't want to spoil anything for anybody. I, I write a book. People can read it if, if they want to. Um, I believe that it is a liberating thing to free yourself from primitive superstition. So religions are primitive superstitions? Oh, I, I think it is, yes. So, uh, you believe it's liberating to uh, tell people that there is no God? I think a lot of people, when they give up God, feel a great sense of release uh, and freedom. Why do you think that? I mean, what's your well, dad, what's your scientist, what's your dad? I think, well, I've had a lot of, of letters saying that. And I've, there are eight billion people in the world, yeah, Dr. Yeah, Dawkins. Know, know. How many letters yeah, have you had? Yeah, I haven't done that. that that's quite, quite true. Professor Dawkins seemed so convinced that God doesn't exist that I wondered if he would be willing to put a number on it. Well, it's hard to put a figure on it, but, but I, I, I mean, I put it as something like, you know, 99% against or something. Well, how do you know it's 99% against, say, in 97? No, I did, you asked me to put a figure on it, and I, it, I'm not comfortable putting a figure on it. I think it's, I, I just think it's very unlikely. What? But you couldn't put a number on it? No, of course not. So it, it could it would be, be 49%? Well, I, it would be, I mean, I, I think it's, it's, it's unlikely, but, but I, but, and it's quite far from 50%. How do you know? I don't know. I mean, I, I, I put an argument in the book. Well, then who did create the heavens and the earth? Why do you use the word who? You see, you, you, you immediately beg the question by using the word who. Well, then how did it get created? Well, um, by a very slow process. Well, how did it start? Nobody knows how, how it started. We know the kind of event that it must have been. We know the sort of event that, that must have happened for the origin of life. What was that? It was the origin of the first self-replicating molecule. Right. How did that happen? I told you, we don't know. So you have no idea how it started? No, no. no, no nor has anybody. Nor has anyone else. What do you think is the possibility that, there, that intelligent design might turn out to be uh, the answer to some issues in uh, genetics or in, well, in evolution? It could come about in the following way. It could be that uh, at some earlier time, somewhere in the universe, a civilization e evolved by probably some kind of Darwinian means to a very, very high level of technology and designed a form of life that they seeded onto perhaps this, this planet. Um, now, that is a possibility and an and a intriguing possibility. Mm -hmm. And I suppose it's possible that you might find evidence for that if you look at the, um, at the B cell, B cells of biochemistry, molecular biology, you might find a signature of some sort of designer. Wait a second. Richard Dawkins thought intelligent design might be a legitimate pursuit? Um, and that designer could well be a higher intelligence from elsewhere in the universe. All right, guys. So what we just heard was Dawkins basically was asked, are you sure? He's like, no, I'm not sure. And then he he says that uh, he tries to put a percentage on his opinion on God not existing. 
And he's like making it up as he goes along. It's hilarious. Who are the dodo birds that buy these books in the droves? If you're going to read it, do what I did. Just borrow it. Don't waste your money on that. Um, A. Hughes, I see you in the room. Now, we did have uh, an atheist. He was kind enough to come in, and we asked him, where is the proof and evidence? And he was unable to provide proof and evidence. Not today. This is on another show. Is it true, if there's any atheists in the room, isn't it true that atheism is 100% faith? And the sad thing is, since there's no evidence, it's faith in nothing. Listen to this. Here's an atheist that was on our show, and, and he's actually admitting, we have the audio, even the atheists themselves admit that it's faith. There is no proof or evidence that atheism is accurate, ladies and gentlemen. However, when I get back from this audio, I'm going to share some things that atheism does provide for society. Hello, I'm going to say Benjamin to the Rational Skeptic. I am an atheist, because the title may be a bit misleading about atheism and how thinking goes wrong. Um, this is going to be a two-part video, and I think it could be quite controversial, in the atheist community at least. But I, it's something that really needs to be addressed, and it's been really worrying me, especially after a discussion I had today. I'll go into that in a minute. Um, the other night I was on the blog TV session, and I made the claim that it takes faith to be, to be an atheist, and I stand by that. Did you hear that? All right, we have a caller coming in. Let's keep our fingers crossed. 601 area code. Go ahead and say hello, 601. Rich, I've been tied up with some. So All right, Evan. Earlier. No okay. problem, Evan. A Evan, surprisingly, no atheist have had the courage to call up and provide proof and evidence that their way of thinking is accurate and correct. Are you shocked by that, Evan? Or no, what were I'm you expecting? I'm not shocked. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I expect you know that kind of thing because I think they love to post it where you can you know you have to type a response but if you've got to talk to them and give them a response they're a little afraid of that I think most of the very often you know it's one thing to leave a post on a video thread or in a forum you know where but when you have to actually speak and, and be able to support your Oh, there we go. I hear audio. Someone say hello. I'm testing the sound. Hello. Oh, hello. there you go. Yeah, I, I, I just wonder if uh, my Skype all of a sudden went down. Yeah, I think we had a, a lag spike. Um, yeah. And Evan, go ahead and try to talk because your sound's out. Oh, okay. Oh, there it is. It's back. Okay. I was going to say in response that, uh, yeah, I think it's one thing for them to be able to type a post in a forum or a thread or something. They can respond that way, with that, because they can easily ridicule somebody. But, but uh, to be able to respond and support their worldview by actually having to speak their their worldview, out of it, of it, that makes them a little dry, I think. Well, Evan, you might find this interesting. So I'm in the chat room the other night, and uh, I this person uh, brought up a couple of points about Christianity. It's like, okay, so I brought up uh, Shock's table debate. You know, using a bath. Now explain there, the uh, table, brother. the table debate. The, uh, the table debate those... is okay. Bass is sitting at the table, reading his motorcycle magazine, and here comes the atheist from the chat room, the bigger brother, and he's going to sit down and explain to him why atheism is correct, and bring and show his evidence for it. Now, myself as an older brother, also, I'm going to bring my proof of evidence for Christianity to the table. So, my proof of Christianity was the Bible. His was nothing, as he sold for a long time. And then I got told that he would bring a fossil, a rock, as proof and evidence for atheism. Now, how could a rock prove atheism? See, this is the madness of atheism. Uh, let me let in. Uh... 509 area code, you're back with us. Hi, I got cut off. Oh, okay. Um, so anyway, um, the basic uh, 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 the basic uh, problem with atheism is that atheism opposes theism 
Therefore, those who 